You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 155. That's my sister's like favorite number, just so you know. 155 of Teach Better Talk. My name is Ray Hewart. And as always, I am with my scruffy friend, Sc- Jeff Gargas. Scruffy? Well, here's why I went with scruffy. It's because we're about to talk about some free PD that we have going on where teachers are feeling like they're kind of teaching on an island. Mm-hmm. And I kind of imagined you in Survivor, like on an island all by yourself, I think you would become scruffy. I would. What's funny though is like, I actually like, you know, I don't grow facial hair very fast. So like (laughs) I'd have to be stranded on an island for a long time for me to, to like become that scruffy. And it would still probably come Wait, wait, wait. I I have seen you with like a five o'clock shadow. Yeah, usually you're pretty clean shaven, but I've seen you. It's a five o'clock on the seventh day shadow. Like (laughs) it doesn't, like this is, you know, I'm, I'm looking pretty, pretty clean and shaven right here, and I think this is from yesterday morning. I'm just saying. Just saying. I've heard from Actually, multiple no, was people last that you look dashing with a cleanly shaven face and with stubble. <laughs> this is this is from the people, not from me. Wow, I appreciate that. Can we revisit the fact that your sister's favorite number is 155? It is, like, and when I read it, I couldn't help but comment on it because it really is my sister's lucky number. Uh, that's really interesting to me. Um, I I'm, like since she was a kid. I'm very intrigued to hear the backstory of that someday. I honestly don't think there is a backstory. My sister is the coolest human on the planet. <laughs> she lives in Scotland, and her favorite number since she was like five has been 155. Very interesting. Well, I'm gonna dig into that someday, but. We're not going to do that today. Right now, today. <laughs> I would instead like you to go back, circle back to you mentioned the the whole our uh, our teacher teaching on an island um, PD series, which is one of our free PD series going on inside on inside of our um, Facebook group, which is amazing. So go to teachbettergroup.com or search fa- you know on Facebook Teach Better Team it'll pop up. But Ray, can you? It's kind of like in the, we're in the mix of it. It's coming to end. So this episode is coming out on the 16th. So we got just a couple left, right? So. Give us like the what's what, the who's who, the whatever, whatever of this. Yeah, like, you know, our our team is constantly trying to support educators. Mm-hmm. Like, that's really what it comes down to. So we do a lot of professional learning live. We do a lot of different things to support teachers virtually. And one of the things that actually our community asked for that we just, we love doing it the one time. So now we just seem to do it every so often is we do these series where we have just live professional learning available in our Facebook group. Mm-hmm. And it's not anything that's really um, like specific to a certain area. It's really just themes that we see in the group that we see people asking for more professional development on. And we say, cool, how can we do even more on this idea until people feel fully supported? So an idea that really has been a theme in the group for a very long time, but very much now, especially in the season we're in, you know, February, March, you know, era, you have all these educators or 3000 educators trying to implement new progressive ideas in their buildings, but they're all over the country, all over the world. And so these teachers have kind of vocalized a lot of them. that They kind of feel like they're on an island trying to be better. And they're not necessarily always surrounded by mentors and coaches and colleagues who are helping them with this process. And they see our Facebook group as a hub to get support, to get insight, to brainstorm. And so uh, our team came up with this really fun um, PD series that we're doing right now in our private group that's all themed around, you know, teaching on an island. Mm -hmm. So um, we had survival mode um, was the session we already did on the 4th. On the 8th, we talked about being a castaway. On the 11th, Becky and I went live and we talked about kind of like a message in a bottle. And so we have two more left. So if you're listening to this right now on the 16th, there's two more sessions you can try and make. Um, One is on the 18th of March and the other is on the 22nd. And one is talking about feeling stranded and the other is about sending out an SOS. And the reason I like these is not only are we involving as many educators as possible and trying to have people 
be active participants in this live professional series, but they're also saved. So even if you missed, you know, missed one of them, or if you can't make the 18th, like no stress. If you're in our Facebook group, every video, whether it's a planned video or a part of our series is saved um, right then and there. So you constantly can get kind of updated when you have the time. Yeah. Which I love that. That's awesome. So, so that's, that's, yeah, I love when we do these free PD series and we've been doing, seems like we're doing more and more, which I really like. Well, I like that it's people happening. People respond more. positively. Yeah, we need to keep yeah, doing so it. Why so, not and, do the, and the group is growing so well. And so, be, be even beyond these um, these awesome series that we do, just that group is such a great place to go and just be supported or to support others, to share resources, to collaborate, to just get that little pick me up you might need from day from day to day, from time to time. It's just an awesome group. We love it. Uh, such amazing group of educators from all over the world in there. It's really, really cool. So if you're not in that group already, go to teachbettergroup.com. That'll take you there. Or just go over to Facebook, search Teach Better Teams. You'll see our page pop up. You can give that a like if you want. But then you'll see the group as well. Just hit uh, the request to join and we'll get you in there. So super awesome. And then you can go on and get all this free PD. Yeah, I feel badly. I feel like I point people that direction all the time because it's just a collection of people that are trying to be better and do better. Yeah. And it sounds cliche, but it's one of my favorite spots because everything there seems to be extremely organic. Like yes. it's just constant conversation. It's not yeah. planned. We're not necessarily like even sharing our stuff in there. It's just people yeah. talking yeah. shop. And I really like that. Yeah, And we actually try very hard as a team to not try to guide the, the conversations. We may occasionally pop in to like try and start a conversation around like a poll or something like that. But we try, like, we just want it to be a place for support. It's just a community for you to come to. Like, if you're on the island, like, this is the ship you can jump onto, and we'll take you to safety, at least for a little while. Yeah. We might take it, have to take it, at least for a little bit. We might have to take it back to the yeah. island, depending on things, but you know, like, it's, but it's just a great spot. So make sure you get in there. That's super awesome. So, um, speaking of awesome, let's talk about this episode. So, this was a great episode. Um, we met Stu uh, Karoff at Impact out in Minnesota this past December. Uh, it was actually in one of my sessions. He and I had a great conversation afterwards. He's done some really, really cool things um, around Linux, uh, which he's going to break down what that is. Uh, if you're not familiar with Linux and open uh, uh, the open software, but um, which really, I, I just really love that he's he's taken this platform that allows him to use his open source uh, platform to let his students dive further into the technology that you're they're using so they can learn how it actually operates too which is i, I think is really really cool um toward the end of the episode he actually shares some some really cool um things that they're working on that are going to be some awesome experiences i think for their students to to really enjoy that's going to like really and i think for Stu as the teacher helping to lead that to see like sort of the fruits of all this these labors and these ideas that he's had kind of come to fruition really provide some really cool stuff so Stu is a social studies and technology teacher um, and he runs these Linux clubs. He's in Minnesota, uh, super passionate dude. Um, and I thought he was spot on in the episode. He had his answers lined up. He was ready to go. He was, he, he loves what he does. He's super passionate about this. I, I got to meet him in person. And when you're in person, you're just like, you're captivated by what he's saying and you're just chatting with him. Um, and he's just so passionate about it. It's really, really cool. So anything you want anybody to take away from the episode other than all the stuff that I just rambled on about? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he just said at the end of the episode, I think we had finished recording. He was like, this isn't my first rodeo. Yeah. So I think he's just yes. so eager to share always. And we always value educators that are eager to share. So connect yeah. with them. Love it. So let's dive into episode 155 with Stu Karoff. Hey, everyone. It's Ray. We are about to get right back to the episode, but I wanted to make sure you are a part of our Facebook group. The Teach Better team has a private Facebook group that has grown so much over the past few months, and we continue to do live sessions, answer questions, and have teachers share their lesson plan ideas so we can all collaborate together. Head over to Facebook and search Teach Better Team to request to join, or you can head to teachbettergroup.com and request there. Either way, we'll see you over on Facebook. Now let's get back to the episode. All right, we're here and we are chatting with Stu Karoff. And Stu, it's so awesome to have you on. We were just reminiscing that we met back in December at the Impact Education Conference in uh, Minnesota. And it was awesome uh, that we got to connect there. We talked about some of the things you're doing. And I'm like, hey, you got to come on this podcast. And you said, okay, and here we are. So super excited to have you on, man. I want to uh, dive into your story, learn all about you. But before we go too far, how are you feeling right now? 
I'm feeling just great and um, really appreciate you having me on tonight. Absolutely, Stu. It was so fun to connect with you in December. And I just think that it's going to be awesome to dive more into your story. So before we get into all of the questions that we'll be going through with this podcast, will you tell us a little about yourself and all that you do? Absolutely. Well, I am Stu Karoff. I I am a social studies and technology teacher at a charter school in Aspen, Minnesota, or in uh, Savage, Minnesota. Name of the school is Aspen Academy. I've been there um, a little less than a year. This is my first year there. And prior to that, I worked in charter schools in the St. Paul area. Um, I've also spent a fair amount of the last 10 years uh, leading Linux clubs at uh, at schools and trying to help schools with incorporating the use of open source software into what they're doing with tech. And there's a variety of reasons why you'd want to do that, but that's been one of my big focuses. All right, so, so I'm going to take us right into that. So give me one of the reasons you might want to do that. <laughs> oh, I number one. Know. I know everyone listens going, okay, so what's one of the reasons, Stu? So let's, okay. let's go to that. What's one of the reasons? Let's, let's hear one of them. Uh, number one reason is cost. Um, the, with any school, technology is going to stretch your budget, especially a charter school that cannot appeal to the voters and say, please pass a levy so we have more money. Uh, and with open source software, especially if you're using Linux, it is a great way to stretch the life out of out of older equipment that maybe is past its usefulness running Windows, especially now that Windows 7 has gone bye-bye. And you can keep these things up and running for another few years, and, it, the, and it's a great way to bring your machines back to life. You can also use uh, open source software with uh, refurbished machines that you can get from outside of your school and you can put machines in front of the kids at a fraction of the cost of getting new and open source software is free you can get the software at zero dollars very cool so i like that so so you also mentioned this is something we talked about when we met on um, the linux club so for anyone who's listening that might not know what linux is and what a linux club is can you kind of break that down for us Absolutely. Uh, Linux is a computer operating system that you know runs your, your hardware, runs all the other programs that are on your computer. The ones that people are most familiar with would be Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X. Um, you might also be familiar with uh, uh, things like uh, Chrome OS or iOS on an iPhone, that kind of stuff. Uh, Linux is an operating system that you can obtain without having to pay a licensing fee to the the publisher of it and you can put it on as many machines as you want to so that in a nutshell is it's an alternative mainly to uh to windows or or mac os mm -hmm. gotcha and so then um the clubs that you've created can you give us like the thousand of you of that i know you can get pretty deep into it, but sort of just what you're doing with those clubs and the students? Oh, absolutely. Um, the short version is the kids in the club, and, and these are kids that range uh, as young as fifth grade, and uh, I've worked with kids as old as eighth grade, learn how to install, configure, and use all of the software that we put onto the computers. So it isn't just them sitting down and using the computer so they can, you know, take a vocabulary quiz or something like that, although we do that, um, it's the kids are actually putting all of that code onto the computers. You know, so it's like they're just not, they're not just users, but they're becoming technologists. Yeah, which, which is so cool and so uh, important for them to understand how those things actually work as well. Mm -hmm. So super cool. Awesome. So I really appreciate you kind of sharing that with us because I think what you're doing is really is, is unique, but also really important and very cool. Uh, so let's talk. Uh, one of the things we always talk about on Teach Better Talk is a failure, sh uh, sharing a story about a time that we've had a stumble, a challenge, a failure. So can you share a story with us about a time you've had a failure? Kind of tell us what happened. How did you overcome that? And what did you take away from that experience? Well, um, one failure that I've had in trying to incorporate tech is to is simply making the assumption that other things were happening in the building to, to make, sort of prepare the way for me that actually weren't going on. Um, and I don't want to blame anybody for that, but I simply wasn't communicating with the folks I was working with. 
I worked at a school where we used a system called Study Island. And um, I wanted to use it so my kids could take social studies quizzes. I went and, and wrote the quizzes, had them ready to go, only to discover that nobody in the building was showing the kids how to use uh, that system or even making sure that they had uh, correct login IDs. I had assumed that that was already going to be done by the time they showed up in my social studies class. So I ended up having to take on a greater role uh, just so they could use the system in my room. Now, nice benefit of that was is that when they started going in and using the, those things in language arts and math, they already knew their login credentials. But I ended up being the one who had to show them. I feel like that is such a teacher, a typical teacher story of, I was all prepared, I just want to do something awesome, and then, oh, wait, they didn't have the setup or the background knowledge to actually make it happen. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, my goodness, oh. been there a million and times. And, and that happens to all of us, you know, where it's like, you know, you, you know, you have a certain expectation of, okay, kids are coming into my room, and then we are going to hit the ground running, and, oh, wait, we can't do that. And uh, so then that's when you have to backtrack. You need to alter that plan at least for one day and then figure out, all right, how, what's the most expedient way to move forward? Um, it, it requires flexibility. Absolutely. All of teaching requires flexibility. That's totally true. So with everything that you have been able to do so far, and obviously you have a ton of goals for the future, you know, what's kind of keeping you excited about education these days and all that you're doing? What's keeping me excited about education is the two things. One is the enthusiasm that my students are bringing to the table when, uh, when they sign up for this thing that most of them at the beginning of this year had never heard of. Uh, and the other thing is, is that I'm currently working with an administration that even if they don't completely understand you know, all the ins and outs of software licensing and open source code and yada, yada, yada. They, they, maybe they don't really understand all of that. They can see that there's a tangible benefit to it. So they've, they've been green lighting the ideas that I've been bringing to the table, especially since we're able to do something that's not costing them anything. So as a result, um, we've been, you know, we've been able to, uh, to get things up and running at my new school a lot faster than I thought we were going to. It's been really exciting. No, it's so exciting. So when you're looking at implementing something new or, you know, driving into a new idea with students, can you give us kind of a piece of advice that you think might be helpful for teachers, whether it be a new teacher or a veteran teacher who's been in the classroom for multiple years? What should they be considering as they continue to move forward, you know, trying something new and getting support of their stakeholders? Um, first thing is, uh, have, you know, just have two principles in mind, start small, then grow big. Um, if you, you know, if you're starting small with a small idea, you can always add to it from there. If you're, if you're starting with the big initiative, uh, then you might find that you, you have to, to backtrack and retrench a little bit, whereas you, it's, it's easier to add than it is to subtract. So that would be my advice. Nothing wrong with growing big, though. I, I encourage that. In fact, I've got some big ideas that we're going to be doing this year. Um, and if time permits, we'll talk about those. Uh, give, give us a couple. What, what's one or two things that you're doing that, that you're going big this year? Let's hear it. I like it. Would you like to hear about the one that starts tomorrow? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, <laughs> right now in my classroom, I'm using some computers that we – literally saved from uh, going to the recycler. That was the next step. And I said, I, 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 I told the, the IT guys that were about to get rid of them, said we can, if, if, we, if we refurbish these using Linux, we can use these in my, you know, in somebody's classroom, mine or somebody else's. You know, let me be the recycler. Can I have these? And they were like, yeah, sure. We're going to throw them out anyway. Uh, so I have a set of computers in my room running 100% open source software. Um, but those computers are showing their age, and I kind of figured that might be a stopgap measure, you know, temporarily. But tomorrow, 
we're going to start to shoot a video that's going to be part of a crowdfunding campaign. Um, this is going to go up on probably GoFundMe. I'll have to work out those details with um, with the school. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to reach out to our families, reach out to the open source community, local area businesses, and we're going to try to raise money to uh, to purchase some computers and a new cart uh, to to house them. And then that will be something that's not just parked in my room, but I'll be able to share it with the other middle school teachers. All of the software work is going to be done by my students. Um, I'm going to guide them how to do it, but every computer that we're going to be putting in front of one of those middle school kids is going to be prepared for them by a middle school kid. That is so cool. Yeah. So that I'm very excited about. Um, don't have a launch date yet, but it's on the way. Um, uh, the other thing is, is that uh, as we've been trying to share the idea of using free and open source software in school and making students partners in the process, I like to call that, um, where they're not just receiving the tech, but they're actually helping to, in, you know, to guide it, to prepare it, to maintain it. Um, People have been interested in what we've had to say about it. So we've been invited to speak at a major open source conference uh, coming up in May of this year uh, for the for the very, I think it's for the first time. I, I don't recall it happening before, but there's, um, uh, there's an, a conference called DrupalCon. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. I have. Okay, Drupal is a con content management system, and they have a conference that's built just around that. It's in a different city every year, so that one moves around. Well, for the first time, it's in Minneapolis. We've been asked to be presenters at that conference, so we'll be doing a featured session there. And it isn't just me that's going to be doing the talking and the teaching. Um, five of my students are going to be doing that, too. Uh, so, so we're pretty excited about that. That's, that's quite an opportunity. That's super cool as well. I mean, talk about the, both of those things, just the experience that your students are going to gain from that. Um, it's just so cool. Not to mention the high, I mean, you know, going to the conference, the highlighting of, of what you guys are doing and stuff is, is really awesome as well, but, uh, really cool that the students get to go as well. Really neat, man. Thank you. Thank you. And, and they're excited too. In fact, we, this time around, I, I actually made them actually like almost like fill out a job application. Okay. You got to show me you really want this one. Okay. So that's <laughs> how we, we narrowed down to the ones that are going to get to go. Very, very cool, man. That sounds super cool. Uh, I'm loving that. Let's, uh, let's have a little bit of fun now. Let's do the next six questions we're going to do. And your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. You ready to go? I'm ready. All right. Give us just one EdTech tool you cannot live without. EdTech tool I cannot live without. That would be Google Chrome. Uh, give us a book that you're reading right now. Book I'm reading right now, I'm uh, rereading one of the uh, Vince Flynn books. Uh, I think I'm rereading uh, Pursuit of Honor. Uh, and who do you need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? Give us up to three. Uh, who do you need to follow on Instagram or Twitter today? I would recommend Alice Keeler. I would recommend Casey Bell. And uh, just for kicks, I no, no, I was going to say uh, Gardner Bryant, the Linux gamer, but I'm actually going to say my friend uh, Phil Shapiro, who's uh, a librarian out in the Maryland uh, area, out in D.C., um, great guy as far as, you know, library, public education, and a uh, wealth of open source information. All right. And give us a good YouTube channel or website for educators. YouTube channel or website for, for educators. I, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Casey Bell's website. What is that? Mm -hmm. Um, what, and, uh, what does she call Shake her? Up learning. What's that? Shake, Shake up, up learning. Shake oh up learning, my yeah. goodness. She's brilliant. Yeah. Yes, great, great resource. Uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Daily, weekly, or monthly routine. I would say weekly at least. Try to catch one good idea that you simply haven't ever heard of before and see mm -hmm. if it will work for your class. Love that. And lastly, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Uh, my friend Jeff Cater once told me, learn to say no. Mm, good advice. <laughs> Hard to do, but good advice. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
so challenging to do. Mm -hmm. And finding the right things to say no to and the right things to say yes to, even though you're scared. That, that is that is a hard balance right there, Stu. Mm -hmm. It certainly is. Absolutely. So I want to make sure our listeners can stay connected with you. And I know that you're just a wealth of knowledge. So would you mind kind of sharing, whether it be your Twitter handle or something like that, that they could, you know, continue this conversation with? Okay. The, uh, the two that I like to put out would be uh, Twitter and the website. My Twitter is at Stu Does Linux. So that's S-T-U-D-O-E-S-L-I-N-U-X at Stu Does Linux. That's my Twitter. Uh, and then the, the website, and this is for, for anybody, not just teachers, but anybody who wants to start working with kids and uh, start getting their feet wet with open source software. Um, I have a, a website called the Linux Club Guide, uh, and that is www.linuxclubguide.com. Very cool. And, you know, you can find all the links and resources and everything we mentioned in this episode over at teachbetter.com, as well as those links for connecting with Stu and keeping this conversation going with him. So head over to teachbetter.com and find the show notes over there. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really, really appreciate that. And let's keep taking this one step further.